Hi everyone, I'm Emil Stonic, editor at large at Bon Appetit, and this is Almost Every Way to Cook Salmon. There's a whole lot of fish in the sea, people. There's big fish and little fish, red fish and blue fish, but today we're going to be taking a closer look at one very special fish in particular, salmon. Specifically, we're going to be working with Aura King Salmon, a sustainably farmed variety that's firm fleshed, super rich, and really, really versatile. And we're going to cook it every way we can think of. Sashimi. All right, this raw preparation is about as simple as they come. We've got our salmon filet and we're gonna remove the skin and then we're gonna cut our fish into nice, clean, bite-sized pieces. Voila, salmon sashimi. So this is just salmon, nothing else. Mmm, that salmon is so rich. You're really tasting all of that fat. It's really meaty and clean tasting and extremely tender. It's hard to imagine cooking it when it's so delicious this way. Ceviche. Okay, we're gonna remove the skin again because the skin will be tough if it's not cooked. We're gonna cut our salmon into a quarter inch dice, hit it with some salt, and then squeeze the juice of this lemon over top. We'll let that sit for a few minutes before tasting to let the acid from the citrus kind of cook the salmon. Wow, you can see that the colors change somewhat. That's the acid interacting with the protein. Mmm. The texture is definitely firmer than the sashimi. It's not the best fish for the job. Ceviche is typically made with a leaner, flakier fish, but this is still very tasty cured salmon. We've got brown sugar, we've got salt, we've got some dill, and we're going to mix that all together. Then we're going to pack it around the salmon and wrap it up really tightly, and then weigh it down with this pan and pop it in the fridge to cure. Now that it's been sitting for a couple of days, we're going to unpack our salmon. It's kind of a sticky mess. We're going to cut a few thin slices. Homemade Gravlox. It's darkened slightly and gone kind of matte thanks to the salt and the sugar cure. Mmm, it's delicious huge sweet salty flavor with an incredibly silky texture like smoked salmon without the smoke pan seared salmon doesn't get much more straightforward than this folks we're going to season our fish on both sides with salt add a little oil to our super hot pan and then gently place our fish in here skin side down we're going to use a fish spatula to apply a bit of light pressure to keep the skin from curling up and then let it cook on the skin side about 90 percent of the way and then flip it just to kiss the other side Ta-da! Pan-seared salmon. Damn, that skin looks crispy. You can actually hear it crackle when you cut it. And the inside is beautiful, just barely cooked through. Mmm, it's moist and juicy. Nothing fancy, just simple, delicious, perfectly cooked salmon. Cold pan salmon. Okay, similar, but totally different. We're gonna season our fish on both sides, get a bit of oil into this room temperature pan, place our fish skin side down, and crank the heat. This way, the fish will cook a bit more slowly as the pan heats up, and the fat in the skin will render and crisp up gradually. Flip it over for just a second, and it's good to go. The skin looks nice and crispy, but not quite as crispy as our hot pan method. The inside looks perfect. Mmm. It's almost as good as our hot pan salmon. The skin is my only complaint. Pan fried salmon. This time, we're gonna season our salmon, dredge it in some flour, oil our hot pan, and lay our fish skin side down in it. We're gonna slip a few tablespoons of butter in here, flip our fish, and then baste it a bit with the foaming butter while it finishes. Mmm, that smells great. The filet took on color a lot more quickly than our other pan methods, and that's because of the flour and the brown butter. And yeah, the inside is a bit rare, but if we had left it in the pan, it would have burned. Mmm, yum. It's still tasty, even though it's so rare, but at the end of the day, I don't think that the flour helped our cause. Salmon burger. We're gonna take the skin off and cut it into chunks. We're gonna take a third of it and process it to a paste, which is gonna act as a binder. Then we're gonna pulse the rest of the fish so it's still kind of chunky, scrape it into a bowl, add a bit of mayo and some salt, and then form it into patties and let them chill to firm up. Now that it's been a few hours, we're gonna lightly flour the patty, get some oil into the pan, and carefully sear it on both sides. Here comes the flip. Beautiful. The outside looks nicely browned and crisp thanks to the flour, and the inside looks tender. Mmm, it's pretty tasty, but the texture leaves something to be desired. This would maybe be a great way to gussy up some cheap or even canned salmon, but this feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. You know, let's go outside and get a little fresh air. Grill time. All of these have been salted and oiled already. We've got a whole filet that we're gonna lay skin side down right here. Some cubes of salmon that we've threaded onto skewers here. And here we have a soaked and preheated cedar plank that we're gonna lay another filet onto here. We're just gonna take these off as they're ready. Grilled salmon. 
So, grilling salmon can be a bit tricky. It's fatty, which causes flare-ups, but it's also delicate, so it's hard to move around a lot. This filet definitely got more char than we wanted, and that skin is burnt. Inside, yeah, it's almost raw. Mmm. Yeah. This is not ideal. The burnt bits taste sooty and bitter, and the inside is kind of just warmed through. Grilling can be a great way to cook salmon, but we didn't nail this one. Cedar Plank Salmon So, this cedar plank kind of acted like a barrier between the intense heat of the grill and the fish, and we're hoping that the wood lent some kind of flavor here. The skin is still totally soft, and there's no browning, but we've got a nice medium to medium rare interior. Mmm. Not bad, but I'm not getting much wood flavor at all. Definitely prevented flare-ups, but it also didn't add all that much. It seems more like a gimmick than anything else. Salmon Kebabs Okay, we've got some nice grill marks going, but not a ton of exterior caramelization. The inside, definitely on the more well-done side. Mmm. Pretty tasty. Not as juicy as I'd like. These smaller pieces are way easier to overcook than a whole filet, and we weren't able to cook them long enough to get a ton of color. These would be better with some kind of glaze to speed up the browning process. Grill Basket Salmon We got our grill basket. We got our oiled and salted salmon. We're going to put it right in here, we're going to lock it, and then we're going to put it on our hot grill. The nice thing about this apparatus is that it makes it easier to move the salmon around. Flip it after a couple of minutes, and she's done. You know, I'm pretty disappointed by the color we got here. The basket protected the skin, but maybe a bit too much. The flesh is nicely cooked, mmm, good, but not a whole lot going on. This would probably be better with a larger piece of fish. Let's head back inside and make some pickled salmon. We've got our skinless filet right here, and we're going to cut it into a few bite-sized chunks and get them into this jar. Then, we're going to pour a hot mixture of vinegar, salt, and sugar over top before screwing the lid on and letting it hang out for a few hours in the fridge. So, the color has changed significantly. It's very flaky, but it doesn't feel dried out, and it smells really vinegary. Mmm, yum. Very tangy and sweet. It's definitely a stronger flavor, so if fishy things aren't your bag, it's not for you, but I love it. Canned Salmon Urban homesteading time. We're going to cut our filet into six pieces, layer them into this jar with a bit of salt and a splash of vinegar, and screw the lid on tight. Then, we're going to load it into this pressure canner, set it for high pressure, and crank the heat. Okay, time to depressurize it. All right, now that it's cooked, depressurized, and cooled, we can open it up, and that's canned salmon. As you can see, the fish is fully submerged in liquid. We didn't add any of that. It's just salmon juice. It's definitely sealed, which means we did it right. Yeah, these salmon pieces are fully, fully cooked. Mmm. You know, it's not bad. It's just a little dry. It has the texture of, like, canned tuna. I miss the moisture. But if I had a ton of salmon I didn't know what to do with, this would be a pretty efficient way to make it shelf-stable. Poached salmon. We're going to season it on both sides, open our fish poacher, which is full of gently simmering fish stock, lay our filet down, and cover it. Now that it's done, we're going to lift this base out, and voila, poached salmon. It's worth noting that this apparatus is really meant for a whole fish. It makes it easier for the whole thing to be cooked gently and then lifted out fully intact. But our filet feels really nice, even without any browning to speak of. Ooh, it flakes really easily and it's super juicy looking. Mmm. Yum. Coffee pot salmon. Say you're in a hotel room and you want to cook a piece of salmon, but you got nothing to cook it with. Wrong! You've got a coffee maker. We're going to plop our filet into this carafe with a pinch of salt. We're going to fill the basin with water and turn this bad boy on. Well, that's a coffee pot full of salmon and water, all right. Let's give this liquid a taste first. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to want to make coffee in here ever again. The salmon is actually flaking nicely. Hmm. You know, it's not terrible. And even though it lost some flavor to the water, it's still pretty tasty. Salmon Riette. We're starting with poached and chilled salmon, and we're going to flake it into this food processor. Add a bit of mayo, some lemon juice, a pinch of salt, and then we're going to pulse it just enough to break the salmon up. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. It looks like cat food. Salmon Riette, everybody. So this would obviously be cuter if we put it in a little mason jar and garnished it with some chives or something. On its own, it looks pretty gnarly. Mmm. It's actually really delicious. The lemon adds some nice balance to all that richness. Salmon ice cream? Hold on to your butts, people. We're making salmon ice cream. First, we need to make our ice cream base. We're going to add cream and milk and butter to this saucepan and bring that to a simmer over medium heat. 
While that's working, we've got some egg yolks, sugar, and a pinch of salt, and we're gonna whisk them together until they're light and fluffy. Now that our dairy is hot, we're gonna add a bit at a time to our eggs to temper them. Now, we're gonna dump it into this blender, add about a third of our poached salmon filet, and set aside the rest for later. Buzz it up. Mmm, that's appetizing. We're gonna transfer this back to our saucepan, cook it until it's thick, and then transfer it back into this bowl, cover it with plastic wrap, and chill it until it's nice and cold. We're gonna pour it into this ice cream machine and let her rip. Now that it's almost finished, we're gonna add our flaked salmon for, uh, texture, I guess? And now that it's done, we're gonna scrape it into a loaf pan and let it freeze fully until it's nice and hard. So now our ice cream is completely frozen. Oh my God, the chunks. Ta-da! Here we have the fishiest sundae that ever was. I mean, it looks good, like it could be something delicious like strawberry and not salmon. Some chunks in there. Mmm. You know, up front, it just tastes like really good ice cream with a distinctly fishy aftertaste. It's like eating ice cream while feeding your cat. Steamed salmon. We're gonna season our filet, open this bad boy up, and place our salmon on a little piece of parchment just to keep it from sticking. All right, it's been about four minutes. Lid off, scoop out our beautiful piece of steamed salmon. So no browning here, which is to be expected. This skin looks just like it did when it was raw. Cutting into it, we've got a nice silky medium rare in there. Mmm, very simple. Not a whole lot going on, but this would be delicious on a rice bowl or something with an assertive dipping sauce. Boiled salmon. We've got our pot of hot water here. We're gonna crank the heat, hit it with a few good pinches of salt and slide our filet in there and close the lid. And that, my friends, is boiled salmon. So compared with our other wet cooking methods, this is definitely the least delicate. It actually looks fairly nicely cooked inside. It's not over. Hmm. I don't hate it, but it would be really easy to overcook it this way. If I'm cooking salmon in water, I'm gonna poach or steam it for sure. You know, it's getting a little fishy in here. Let's head back outside. Campfire salmon three ways. We've got a campfire. We've got two fillets of salmon that we've wrapped tightly in clay. We've got a fillet of salmon that we've wrapped in a banana leaf that we're gonna place on top of this hot rock. And last but not least, we've got two fillets of salmon that we've wrapped up in some damp moss for some reason, and we're gonna wedge it right in here. Damn, this fire's hot. And we're gonna take these out as they're ready. Okay, banana leaf is ready. Moss is ready? Clay is hard, so I guess this one's done too. Clay cooked salmon. So the idea here was that the clay would kind of harden to create a protective layer, and it definitely hardened. Let's break this open. God, I hope this clay isn't poisonous. Wow, it didn't stick to the salmon as much as I thought, just the skin. That's actually why we used two fillets, so that we could have skin on both sides. The inside of the salmon is really pretty, actually. Hmm. Honestly, it just tastes like nicely cooked salmon, but nothing special. This seems like more of a party trick than anything else. Banana leaf salmon. It's not bad looking. Even though it was right on that hot rock, there's no crisping of the skin. It just kind of steamed in there, which is cool. It's definitely more on the rare side. Mmm, tastes like steamed salmon with a bit of a vegetal flavor going on from the leaf and just the tiniest hint of smoke. I'd try this again. Moss covered salmon. This looks pretty scary, to be honest. I'm not sure if the moss was supposed to burn, but it did. It's hard to figure out the best way to open it. Okay, all right, a lot of freaky looking parts here. Shockingly, it's not as awful inside as I thought. It's just really uneven. Mmm, it tastes a little burny, even though it didn't take on any color at all. This wasn't nearly as bad as I thought, but it's a pretty terrifying way to cook salmon. You know, things are getting a little weird out here. Let's head back to the kitchen. Deep fried salmon. Time to fry. We're gonna season this filet and drop it into 360 degree oil and let it do its thing. Pop it out to drain, a little extra salt, deep fried salmon. The skin is nice and crispy and a crust kind of formed all the way around, which is cool. Hmm, the inside is on the more cooked side, but it's still flaking nicely. Hmm, it's like the juice got locked in there. Hmm, it's a little greasy and deep frying is pretty annoying, but it's definitely not a bad way to cook salmon. Beer battered salmon. We're gonna make a quick beer batter. We've got some all purpose flour. We're seasoning it with salt. We're gonna open this beer. Hmm. We're gonna add our beer and whisk it until it's the consistency of pancake batter. We're gonna season our fish, 
pop it into the batter, and then right into the hot oil. Ooh, crispy. This crust is beautiful. Crispy and light, just kind of shatters. And the fish inside looks so nice. Mmm. I love this. The batter is crispy and flaky and perfect. Fish sticks. Okay, we're gonna cut this filet into four pieces. We're gonna beat these egg whites until they're nice and foamy. Then we're gonna season our fish, dredge them in a bit of flour, then into the egg whites, and then into some breadcrumbs. We're gonna repeat with the rest of the pieces and then drop the basket. Look at those salmon fish sticks. So this breadcrumb layer is denser than the batter for sure. It's a bit lower profile, but still very crisp. Mm. Oh, a totally different eating experience from the battered fish, but still juicy and delicious. All that fatty goodness got trapped inside. A real step up from your freezer aisle fish sticks. Air fryer salmon. We've got an air fryer. Pop it in here skin side up. Supposedly this is just as good as frying, but I'm suspicious. So that skin is disappointingly flabby. It does seem like a little bit of the fat rendered, and there's a smidge of browning around the edges. Mm. Yeah, it's totally fine. The air frying isn't adding anything to this equation. Why break out R2-D2 when you can just cook it in a pan? Salmon skin chips. Okay, so we've taken the skin off of a bunch of these salmon fillets, but that doesn't mean we have to throw it all out. We're gonna take these pieces of skin and get them into the hot oil to crisp up. A little salt, and we've got salmon skin chips. These are cool. They kind of have the texture of a pork rind or something like that. Mmm, super crunchy, mild fishy flavor. It's like isolating the best part of a crispy salmon filet, sous vide salmon. We're gonna use our vacuum sealer to suck all the air out and seal it. There, this is gonna keep the water at a consistent 115 degrees for about 40 minutes. We're gonna pop it out of this bag, it's very delicate now, get it nice and dry, and then crisp it up in a very hot pan for about a minute on each side. That crust is fairly crispy, but not as crispy as our straight up pan seared salmon, honestly. The inside is gorgeous though. Mmm, so nice. The skin is nicely brown. The inside is almost custardy. I'm really happy with this result, but honestly it's pretty fussy and definitely not better than pan seared in my opinion. Salmon jerky. We're gonna slice our salmon into quarter inch thick slices, lots of salt, and slide it into this dehydrator for about 18 hours at 158 degrees. Ooh, smells like salmon in here. That looks like jerky, all right. You know, it's pretty flexible and it flakes apart easily. Definitely not as tough as beef jerky because it's so much fattier. Mmm, it's really tasty, very salty. Definitely a smidge dried out. Again, this would be a great way to preserve salmon if you caught way too much of it to eat in a week, but otherwise it's not as delicious as some of our other methods. Hair dryer salmon. We're gonna season this fish a little bit on all sides. We've got our hair dryer set to high. You know, I'm really more nervous about this working than not working. I really don't like the idea of people putting something so close to their head that could actually cook their scalp. Okay, it's done, I guess? So the skin is not crisp and the inside is pretty much raw. Mm. Well, but you know, it's warmed all the way to the core and it doesn't taste awful. You know, it kind of smells like burnt hair in here. Let's go back outside. Smoked salmon. This salmon has been cured with salt and sugar for around 24 hours. We're gonna open up our smoker, slide our fish in skin side down and let it smoke for about an hour and a half. Whoo, that's smoky, she's done. So the outside is darkened somewhat and it smells amazing. Oh, there's definitely a lot of contrast between the slightly leathery exterior and this really juicy interior. Mmm, so moist, that flavor is outstanding. Salty and strong, yum. Searzal salmon. We've got our Searzal, which is basically just a modified blowtorch, and we're gonna cook this salmon a bit all over so that it's cooked on the outside and completely raw inside. Very similar to the way that you would for Japanese style tataki. Done and done, that was fast. So the skin has been crisped, and it's just barely opaque all the way around. Cutting in, it's totally raw inside. It's still cold, actually, which is intentional. Mmm, yep. It's tasty, and would be even better cut into slivers and served with a sauce of some sort. Honestly, I prefer straight up sashimi, but if you're squeamish about completely raw fish, this is a good way to go. Salmon on a stick. 
So our campfire here is nice and hot. We've got a piece of salmon that we've wedged into this split stick, and we're just gonna hold this here, turning it every once in a while so that the smoke and the heat can just gradually cook our fish. This is gonna take a while. Well, that looks done to me. Hmm, definitely smells smoky. Yeah, it's pretty unevenly cooked because of the way that certain parts were insulated by the wood. Mm. Outside's a bit dried out, inside's pretty undercooked, but the flavor is really nice. Buried salmon? I dug a pit here earlier, and then I lined it with rocks and built a fire in here that's been burning for the last few hours. Now that it's nice and hot, we're gonna put this foil-wrapped salmon filet in there, bury the whole thing, and dig it up again in a few hours. All right, should be ready by now. Ugh. Ugh. Buried treasure, maybe. Ooh, oh yeah. Okay, I'm trying to not get the dirt in there because of, all right, so we got some dirt. Uh, cutting in, uh, it's actually cooked through. Mm, it's actually pretty tasty, but also this method isn't adding any unique flavor or texture, so it's kind of a whole lot of work for not that much payoff. I'm gonna pass on this one. Mailbox salmon. This mailbox has been preheating in the sun all day, and it's pretty hot. We're gonna pop our foil wrapped salmon into this envelope, put it into our mailbox, and check back in in a few hours. Let's unwrap this thing. Yeah, that is not cooked. It's warm in kind of a clammy handshake sort of way. The inside is totally raw. Maybe if this were August in Texas, but this didn't do anything. I'm not gonna eat this. It's basically been sitting in the danger zone all afternoon. Hard pass. Hot tub salmon. <laughs> Yeah, this salmon doesn't feel that hot. Our janky hot tub was supposed to get up to 104 degrees, but I'm not sure it got there. It probably would have to come up to a temperature that would actually injure me in order to cook the salmon, and that didn't happen. Yep, that is raw. Mm. Yep, raw salmon. But it was nice to take a bath at least. I don't smell like fish anymore. You know, I'm ready to head back inside. Slow baked salmon. All right, we've got our salmon. There's a little bit of salt and oil on it, and we're gonna pop it into this 275 degree oven for about 16 to 18 minutes. Done and done. The thing that I love about salmon cooked this way is the way that it just kind of flakes like that. It's so soft and silky. Mm. So clean, so easy. This is one of my favorite ways to cook salmon. It's not a whole lot to look at, but it's impossible to mess up. Roasted salmon. This time, we've increased the temperature to 400 degrees and we're decreasing the time to five to six minutes. All right, in it goes, and there's your roasted salmon. So even with that temperature increase, it still looks very similar to our slow baked fish. The skin is flabby, we can kind of just scrape that off. You know, it's nicely cooked, but more uneven than our slow baked. More cooked on the outside, more rare on the inside. Hmm, it's very tasty, but not quite as silky as our lower temperature fish. Broiled salmon. We're gonna increase our oven temperature one more time. We've got our salted and oiled salmon, skin side up, and we're gonna pop it under the broiler for a few minutes and see what comes out on the other side. All right, that looks done to me. With the broiler, we had really direct heat from up top, but it wasn't enough to really crisp that skin. It's more tough than crispy. On the inside, it's pretty uneven. Mm, it's fine, but really not offering all that much. It's not better than our slow baked, nor is it as crispy as our pan seared. Not a great one. Salmon on papillot. So we wrapped this filet in parchment paper. We're gonna slide this into a 450 degree oven for about seven to eight minutes so it can steam in that little package. And it's puffed up, I think it should be done. You know, it looks a lot like our steamed salmon. The flesh is flaky and coming apart nicely. Mm. I mean, it's not not good, but this method would be way better if we had some aromatics in there, some lemon slices, maybe a little white wine, some herbs. That would have really upped the ante. Salt crusted salmon. So we've coated this salmon in a mixture of whipped egg white and kosher salt, and we're gonna bake this at 450 degrees until that crust hardens and the inside cooks. All right, that looks like it should be done. Okay, so breaking through this crust here, finding that, yeah, it, it looks like cooked salmon, kind of steamed in its own juices, nothing to write home about. 
the inside is tender, a hair overcooked. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's salty and a little bit dry. This salt crust has a theatrical element to it, but it's all show and no go. All right, today we cooked a whole lot of salmon a whole lot of different ways. What did we learn? Well, for one, when you're working with high quality fish, you don't need to mess with it too much or even at all to make it delicious. Salmon is a really forgiving and versatile fish, and most of our favorite ways to cook it were as simple and straightforward as they come. Have a favorite way to cook salmon that you didn't see today? Drop it in the comments.